Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is how we can go ahead and silently install Power Automate Desktop. Let's go. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So Power Automate Desktop is updated monthly. Every month there's new innovation that's delivered into the tool itself. And so as a result, it's really important that you go ahead and regularly update your pad installations in order to take advantage of this new functionality. And in addition, sometimes you may need to go ahead and, and update pad because it is using specific security certificates and those cert certificates can expire. And so by staying up to date, you avoid any unexpected downtime as a result. Now, naturally, if you need to go ahead and update pad, you want it to be done in a very consistent and efficient manner. And for those reasons, we do have the ability to go ahead and use some command line tools in order to go ahead and silently install the application or the executable, and then also go ahead and silently register the machine. And the registration could be just registering it as a machine on its own, or if you have an existing machine group, you can also go ahead and add the machine to that specific group. So let's go ahead, let's jump into a demo. Let's see exactly how we can go ahead and automate the installation and the registration of a machine. All right, so step one in the demo is that we're gonna go ahead and install Power Automate Desktop. So what I have here is I have Power Automate Desktop found in my downloads folder. Now in terms of where I got this file from, where I can go is to the Power Automate Maker Portal, so flow.microsoft.com, then click on My Flows, Cloud Flows, and then you can click on Install. Now one thing you'll note is if you right mouse click on this link here, copy link, then let's just put it in another browser tab. What you can be assured of is that this is the link that Microsoft will use to go ahead and to update the package itself. So you can go ahead and sort of expect that whenever there's the monthly release that this link is updated to point to the correct executable itself. Now with it installed, what we can go ahead and do is switch to that directory. So C users, my username, downloads, then we're going to find the setup, the installation executable itself. So right here, setup, the Microsoft, the Power Automate, right here. Then what we can do is go ahead and add a couple flags. So we're going to go ahead and install, and we're going to accept the end user licensing agreement. And then we're also going to go ahead and indicate that we want this to be a silent install. Now do note that we need the minus sign before each of these particular flags itself. So let's go ahead, let's hit enter now, and this will get installed for us quite quickly. So what we can see is that this icon has been added, which means that Power Automate Desktop has completed installing. So you might see a slight delay from the time where the cursor goes to the next line and you see the icon itself, but give it you know 15 seconds or so and you'll see that Power Automate Desktop is actually installed. We can go ahead and open this and go ahead and start building once again. So that's step number one. Now step number two is we're gonna go ahead and register our machine. Now this is the equivalent of heading over to machine and then going ahead and being able to register that machine itself. And uh, so that's what we're gonna do uh, as our next step. Okay, so the next step is we now wanna go ahead and register this machine. So I'm gonna show you two ways to go ahead and register the machine. One is for a specific user, and then the other is gonna be through a service principal. So this is the, the statement that we're gonna to use to register it as a user itself. So within the installation folder of Power Automate Desktop, so C Program Files x86, 
Power Automate Desktop. We're going to have an executable there called pad.machineregistration.silent.exe. Now, naturally, it's going to request or require a few different flags. So one of them being dash register. Then if we want to provide the a, a, a name for our machine, like a custom name, here I'm going to provide dash machine name, Weirzy RPA. Then dash username, which is going to be the user that gets this assigned to. And then the environment in which the machine is going to be registered to. And then what I'm going to do is have this dash force. Now, you only need this if you've previously registered machines. And this will just cause you or give you the ability to overwrite any existing configuration. Um, if you haven't already set something up and you include this flag, it'll get ignored. So not a big deal either way. So let's go ahead and let's hit enter and we can go and see how this works out. Okay, so that took uh, a couple seconds and then it completed. Let's now go ahead, open up Power Automate Desktop and see what we find in there. Okay, so we went ahead, we clicked on settings and then we click on machine and then we see our configuration. Now, do note if this was previously open and you were previously configured for another environment or another machine name, you may still see those values. Just click on this little refresh icon here and basically you'll be back in business. So as we can see, we've got the name of our machine. So where's the RPA as we talked about before. And uh, in this case, I wanted to connect to my dev environment and that was the GUID that I had put into it. And, uh, and I'm good. So that worked out quite well. Next, what we're gonna do is we are going to override this configuration. We're gonna use a service principle to register the machine. And uh, then we're gonna see what the, that behavior looks like. Okay, to start with, let's talk a little bit about service principle. So that's a, something that exists inside of Azure AD that allows you to create an entity that can be used for management purposes. So here um, I've got one registered called RPA COE Service Principle that allows me to do things as an administrator in the context of Power Automate and RPA. And so typically how you would find this is you would find your Azure Active Directory service inside of the Azure portal. You'd click on App Registrations. Then you can click on New Registration to sort of complete this. Um, I've already gone ahead and done so. Um, but let me just show you a few things to be aware of. So naturally we've got our client ID that we're going to need. We're also going to need our tenant ID as well. These are values that get created for us automatically when we create the service principle. Then when it comes to the uh, API permissions, um, I've got probably more than I need here just because I've been doing some other things with this service principle. But the one in general that you do want to have whenever it comes to flow is this flow service. And when you go ahead and you know add a permission, you'll be able to go ahead and find the um, the the flow service itself, and then use flows.manage.all, and uh, that'll give you access to a variety of different management functions inside of Power Automate. Uh, the other thing that's going to be of interest to us is secrets. We go ahead, we create secrets, and then we can go ahead and use those secrets as a way of authentication itself. Uh, so that's just a little bit of info about our service principle for this example. Now, what we're gonna do with the service principle is it's gonna register it underneath the context of that service principle. And then from there, what we can go ahead and do is assign other privileges for users to then go ahead and use that gateway. So there's a an important distinction being made here. In the previous way we registered the machine, that user, in this case Kent, now becomes the owner of that machine. That would allow me as an owner to go ahead and you know, do other things with that machine. I could go ahead and share that machine with others. Now as a COE, maybe you don't want that. You want more control over what people can do with machines. And as a result, you as the COE want to install and own the gateway or own the machine rather and then be able to just share use rights with the user so in this case we could go ahead and share the ability for Kent to use this gateway but not to be an owner so what we're going to do here is we're going to call that same machine registration.silent.exe 
We're going to provide our application ID that we saw in the Azure portal. We're going to provide that tenant ID that we saw in the Azure portal. We're going to provide that same environment ID that we did in the last example. We're going to indicate that a client secret will be used as an authentication mechanism. We don't provide the client secret just yet. We're going to see that being prompted for us shortly. Then we're going to have the machine name. So let's just go ahead and just add this, um, add a two behind this just so it's unique. Uh, we're also going to have the dash force and then the dash register as well. So let's go ahead and let's click this button and see what happens. Okay, I'm being asked for my client secret. And then after that, we can see that it's now complete. So let's go ahead, let's open up Power Automate Desktop here. And remember, right now I'm logged in as Kent. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Settings. And I'm going to hit Refresh. And notice I don't have any permissions. Essentially, this machine was taken over in some respects by the admin itself. So let's go into the Power Automate Maker Portal as the admin to see what we can find when it comes to machines. So now I'm logged in as a different user, in this case Lydia, and I am going to click on Machines. And when I click on Machines, uh, let's go ahead, let's just refresh this screen. We're going to see all of the machines registered in this environment. And so sure enough, we can see we've got Kent RPA Machine 2. Uh, it's available. And what we can see who the owner is, is that RPA COE service principal. So no longer is this registered to Kent. But what we can do here is we can go ahead and manage access, find Kent, and then say, okay, Kent, you can now be a user of that specific gateway itself. There are some ways to automate this sharing access as well. Um, if that's of interest, do put it in the comments and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and, and create a video there for you. Uh, so here now we've got it, Kent would be able to go ahead and use this. So if we head back over to this specific, uh, to pad at running as Kent, we can see that it is connected as Kent, but that I only have run only permissions. And so this is a good tool for COEs where you want to have more control over what your end users can do. In this case, Kent can use the machine, but he can't make changes to it. He can't share it, things of that nature. So best of both worlds uh, from that perspective. All right, so thanks for checking out this video. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Obviously, likes, subscribes, comments, always welcome on YouTube. So go ahead and take care of that as well. Thanks, and we'll see you again soon.